Welcome to the MetPro Method Podcast. I am your host, Crystal O'Keefe, and today I am joined by MetPro Director of Coaching, Megan Omley, and we are going to be discussing Meal Planning 201. So what does that mean? Well, at MetPro, we know our clients like to get help with meal planning, but also everyone has a different level or skill set of cooking and planning. So this episode is going to be geared toward a person who is fairly new to MetPro, but who has been with us likely for two and a, two weeks plus. So maybe you've cooked your whole life, but you're fairly new to meal prepping. You've done the basics, but you're looking forward to something a bit more complex, maybe a soup with a few ingredients to share with your family or for yourself for a couple of days. So this is going to be a great place for you to start. However, if you're just starting out, we have another episode for you. Check out Meal Planning 101. In the meantime, Megan, thank you so much for joining me today. Yeah, thanks for having me. I'm excited to kind of talk about this intermediate phase of Metpro meal prepping. <laughs> I am excited about it too. I feel like I, even a year in, I tend to be the uh, 101. <laughs> I tend to keep my things <laughs> Which separate. Which is fine. I think that is amazing. <laughs> <laughs> I like the simple, but I want to learn yeah. to get a little more, a little more complex. So last time we talked about you're prepping for the first time ever. Now we're going to switch some things up a bit. So for this this kind of topics intermediate phase are there different supplies that that listeners should ensure that they have on hand to get started i mean i talked about that food scale last time you right did. and you i'm did. still <laughs> going to talk about it again right here because i think it's really important right uh, also i'll mention here you know that food scale and understanding what your food looks like on your plate from that 101 series can also help you when you're eating out Right. Because it's not going to be as simple as, oh, I want you eating, you know, protein from your palm, the size of your palm, or, you know, I want you having this much fat, the size of your pinky. Right. It doesn't necessarily work like that, especially on MetPro. And so understanding food scale <laughs> that, you know, what it looks like on your plate will help you, you know, eat out that kind of a thing. You can carry that so visualization again, with you. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. And your meal plan changes. So again, I'm big on the food scale. And then, you know, the second thing I would say here is if you're a recipe person and that kind of helps you take this met pro meal prep to that intermediate level, all recipes.com baby, like you can find thousands. And I always recommend like, look in your fridge. What do you have? Oh, you have sweet potatoes that are going bad. Okay. All recipes.com put in the ingredient sweet potato. It's going to bring up like 3000 sweet potato <laughs> recipes, you know, avoid things that have marinades or those wet ingredients, right. But things that have dry spices, um, or uh, that kind of a thing is fantastic. Right. Um, so all recipes.com keeps it simple and helps you use what you already have instead of, you know, having to buy a whole bunch of things that then might go bad. Right. Yeah. No, that's a great place to start. And it's almost overwhelming how many recipes all recipes yeah. has. So I think it's great when you can uh, filter by <laughs> ingredient that is by food. Absolutely. Yes. yes. And like I said, that's just going to bring up a ton of options and most of them you'll be able to adapt and use in your intermediate met pro cooking Yay. easily well, yeah so so then you're looking at these recipes how do you know what is a good recipe to try are, are there any telltale signs that you can look for that like this is a good one to try yeah you know i love this question gosh I get told so frequently I'm bored or my food isn't interesting or my family can't eat these things, right? This is a sign that you're ready for kind of that next phase, right? Um, you know, think about first the recipes that you used to love, right? What were things that you used to create and think about how might I do that now, Okay. right? And I'm not necessarily talking about your mom's lasagna. Darn. It's still going to be, you know, that's probably, <laughs> ugh, that's probably going to be, you know, phase three or, you know, kind of that more advanced <laughs> level. Um, but I'm talking about things like tacos or spaghetti or cauliflower pizza, right? Items where you are still starting separately, weighing separately, but now you're creating something at the end. Okay. Does that, does that make sense? Yeah. That's kind, it, of the, that's kind of the key there. 
Okay. So you're looking at a recipe and you're going to be looking for, are you keeping the items still kind of separate before you bring them together? Are you able before to you put them together? Okay. Right. Like think of tacos, right? Yeah. You're cooking the ground meat separate. Maybe you're adding some onion in there. Well, great. Don't forget if you are doing something like that, right. And you're prepping it for three, four days, that meat, if you're just cooking for yourself in this instance, you know, make sure that you're also doubling or tripling that onion that you're adding, right? So then when you're dividing it, it's all there. Or if you're using a sprinkling, don't count it. It's going to be a-okay, right? Um, But yes, so, you know, you've got that ground beef and then you've got the cheese and maybe the avocado, and then you've got your lettuce that also goes in it, right? And then you've got your corn tortilla. So those things are all still separate as you start, but then when you put it on your plate, you've got, you know, your two or your four corn tortillas, whatever it might be, or your six or your eight, depending on who you are. Um, <laughs> on Metro, it is possible to have eight corn tortillas at one serving, um, which is a lot. Um, but then you would put your ground meat in. So then you might measure it and say, okay, where's my four ounces? food scale, and then (laughs) sprinkle that between the four or the six, whatever it might be. Right. And then you might measure your cheese and then put it on. Does that make sense? Yes. So you're still measuring it, but you're bringing it together to create something. Or like I said, that spaghetti, right. You're measuring that noodle. And then, you know, maybe you've created a homemade sauce using a tomato paste or, um, you know, a canned tomato. That's great. And you've added a whole bunch of like herbs and spices, which totally doable. Um, And then you've put your veggies into that, right? And then you're putting it on your pasta to then create something, but you've measured each individual thing separately. Okay. Yeah. That makes perfect sense. Yeah. So when we talked in the last, uh, the last episode, you know, our one on 101, you wanted us to focus on knowing those serving sizes. So is there a different skill that we need to focus on for this intermediate level? Not per se, because you still need to be measuring at home. Like I said, right. You're probably, you know, two, three weeks in, um, you still need to be measuring those items at home, especially because you've probably gone through a face change or two. Right. And so you're visualizing things a little bit differently now. Um, and so you're getting the hang of, you know, what does that one third cup of brown rice look like, or that two thirds cup compared to, you know, the three ounces of sweet potato, what have you. Right. And you're still getting familiar with, okay, what options do I have? I keep using brown rice and sweet potato, but there's way more options than that. Um, (laughs) a lot more, right. At points you've got, you know, a bagel or a whole wheat tortilla, or, you know, there's lots of different things. Um, so I wouldn't say there's really a skill, but you've got in your brain, what one serving of your options are, right? And so you're not having to think about, that's kind of in the back of your head, right? You're not having to think about that every single moment. So you can kind of conquer this new thing of, okay, what can I create? What can I put together, right? So it kind of takes something out of the equation of difficulty. Right, exactly, which leads to less frustration, right? Because (laughs) you've learned it. You don't have to keep learning it every time, right? But I can't tell you, you know, how often people are like, my family won't eat these things. And, you know, and I'm like, really? Like your family doesn't like tacos or even a mac and cheese? And people are like, wait, what? How do I? And I'm like, you get pasta, you get cheese, like you get an oil, you can make your own little cheese sauce. Like it's possible. And they're like, oh my gosh. Okay. Right. So this is that point where you can really go, okay, now I can kind of create a little bit more, but those first two weeks, yeah, you might find yourself prepping two different items, right. For everyone. And, you know, you're kind of just out of luck if your kids only eat chicken dinos and strawberries, like, <laughs> it's probably not going to factor in here at any point, but you know, <laughs> well, do you have like a, a favorite example of a slightly more complex meal on Met Pro, what it might consist of? Let's see my favorite, you know, a complex meal or that more like advanced would be like a three bean chili or, you know, your, 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 a casserole that you take and adapt for a potluck or something. Um, you know, in this instance, you're really measuring those items and then cooking 
them, but then also you're probably having to realize, you know, okay, I have this many beans that counts for part of my carbs and part of my protein. And so how do I get those things to match? Right. So that would be really more complex. Okay. Okay. So we'll get there. We'll get there, <laughs> but not quite there, at, you know, three, three ish weeks. Not yet. Not yet, but soon. Well, so is there anything else that listeners should know to kind of be prepared for this level that we're this level of food creation that we're talking about? Just as you feel more comfortable, right? As you start to think, okay, what are dinners this week, right? When you sit down on a Saturday, Sunday, or maybe you do it on Monday and you're thinking through your meal prep for the week. As you start realizing, oh, I'm thinking of sweet potato, quinoa, brown rice, you know, whole wheat tortilla, corn tortilla. If those are popping into your mind relatively easy and you're like, oh, I can use these things then you're probably ready to start creating a little bit more. But if you're still in that app and like, okay, what are my options again? How many meal carbs do I need here? Um, Probably stay in that, you know, that 101 or that more beginner. But then as you're getting more comfortable with understanding where macros fit, you can probably progress it a little bit. And I'm using meal carbs as my primary example, because we incorporate almost any type of protein you can think of and almost any type of fat you can think of. So I always use those carbohydrates as kind of my, my example for getting more complicated, right? Yeah. I, and I, I like the carbs because you mentioned pasta. There's so many different kinds of pasta that you can buy now. Mm-hmm. And, mm-hmm. uh, and they're also, they have protein in them sometimes. So it's like, it can, it can really condense like, you know, a cup if you're if you're having quite a few carbs in your plan, you can get a whole cup of pasta, which absolutely. sounds that sounds like a lot. It's a lot of food. Yeah, yeah, it absolutely <laughs> is. Yeah, it absolutely is. Well, so. Megan, thank you so much for your time today. Uh, would you like to give people yeah. your email address so they can reach out to you if you have any if they have any questions? Absolutely. So it's Megan M E G A N at Metpro dot com. Wonderful. Well, listeners, that's all for this week. Uh, You can find all of the MetPro Method episodes anywhere you get podcasts, or you can go to metpro.co slash podcast. Now, please be sure to follow the show and rate and review because that lets other people know what they can expect. And you can also learn more about MetPro at metpro.co. I'm your host, Crystal O'Keefe, and I will be back next week. Until then, remember, consistency is key. 